uh, writer says, lay aside all the weight and sin that, that so easily can, can, can ensnare us, all right? hallelujah, and, 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 and focus on the race that is set before us and run with patience the, the road that is set before us, uh, leaning on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And that Paul really had a good word for us uh, when Paul said, you need to lay aside what's behind and press on the mark towards the price of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. As such, I invited you to explore and examine with me the work, the will, and the way of God as he moves upon a people, ushering them into a new place. And those people are the children of Israel as you encounter them in the book of Joshua. And, and, and we find the people of God who have not only been delivered from bondage, but you also find the people who have just been through 40 years of a wandering wilderness. Not only that, but you encounter them now in the book of Joshua as they are at the beginning of their quest into the land of Canaan. They are promised land and the people of God being ushered into a new place, a new season, and a new destiny. And as you will recall, uh, that the work, the way, and the will of God upon the lives of the children of Israel and therefore upon our lives as well really is defined, brethren, in, in what, uh, uh, what, what God does in the beginning uh, of, of, of their move into the promised land in three major cities, Gilgal, Jericho, and Ai. Now, I got some feedback. I said I went too quickly, so I'm going to try and go slow. All right, Mrs. Mashiko and the police. But I try and go slow today. So as a way of recap, because I believe I left you last time. Um, uh, we, we, we encountered Gilgal in Joshua chapter 4 and 5. And in Gilgal, we see God show us that, 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 that there are certain things that are necessary as we are rebuilding. There, there are certain things that are necessary as we are moving into a new place. Number one, God says, do not be sidetracked when you encounter hurdles, that obstacles are inevitable. But just because you encounter obstacles, it shouldn't cause you to lose sight of the purpose and the plan of God about your life. Amen? That God shows us that the same God that walked with the children of Israel and made them pass through the Red Seas, the same God that made a way through the Jordan River is the same God that will be with you in whatever it is that you're going to face in your future. Amen. Not only should you not be sidetracked when you encounter hurdles, but secondly, you should not be disappointed when you encounter opposition. Yeah. Yeah. I want to remind you yet again that opposition is the price of favor. Yeah. That you cannot walk in the favor and the will of God and be liked by Ladi Dadi and everybody. For the truth of the matter is, when God's hand is on your life, there is an automatic dislike of you by somebody. When the move of God is on your life, automatically somebody will stand against you. Now this is free for somebody here today who says, well, I am saved, I'm a believer at Agape Family Church, and I'm sitting nicely here in the sanctuary uh, in President Park, and therefore I got it going on. Hallelujah. Here it is. I'm going to give it to you just for free. Uh, do, 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 don't get it twisted. Hallelujah. Just because you're a believer and there's a move of God in your life, don't think that everybody likes you. I promise you now that somebody don't like you. Amen. You might just as well get used to it. When God is on the throne of your life, somebody hates you right now. Somebody right now wishes that your week could fall off during worship. Hallelujah. Somebody right now wishes that your boo could break up with you. Because they just don't like you. Amen? Opposition is the price of favor. Amen? And what we learned last week and I want to reiterate to you is that most often God will, will, will move obstacles. But it is very rarely that God moves opposition. God allows them to stay on. But what makes God God? is the fact that he renders them harmless. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And, 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 and you've got to have enough faith not to be discouraged when you meet opposition. Have enough faith not, not, not to be sidetracked when, when you encounter hurdles. But last and finally, not to be joyless because of obedience. 
Because that the Gomisi, the Lord is going to call and command us to do things that we may feel that are not good to us, but certainly are good for us. Amen. Amen. So that was Gilgal. Now today, I want us to hop off the bus in the city where God shows himself uh, in, in Jericho. Amen. Amen. We read about uh, Jericho uh, in Joshua chapter 6. And I invite you to navigate your way to the Old Testament passage in the sixth chapter of the book of Joshua. And I ask that if you're physically able to please stand with us so that together we might reverence the reading of God's word in Joshua chapter 6. In the sixth chapter of the book of Joshua, beginning in verse 1, that's where we're going to find the foundation of what the word of God would like to speak to us about today. First verse reads as follows. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho in your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of rams, horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the walls of the city will fall down flat and the people shall go up every man straight before him. Then Joshua the son of Nun called the priest and said to them, Take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of rams, horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Proceed and march around the city and let him who is armed advance before the ark of the Lord. So it was then when Joshua had spoken to the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets or ram's horns before the Lord advanced and blew the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. The armed men went from the priests who blew the trumpet and the rear guard came after the ark while the priest continued blowing the trumpet. Now Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, Shout. Then you shall shout. So he had the ark of the Lord circle the city, going around it once. Then they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. Then seven priests bearing seven trumpets and ram's horns, before the ark of the Lord went and continually and blew the trumpets and the armed men went before them. But the rear guard came after the ark of the Lord while the priest continued blowing the trumpet. And the second day they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. So they did six days. But it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. On that day, only they marched around the city seven times. And the seventh time it happened, when the priest blew the trumpet, that Joshua said to the people, Shout! For the Lord has given you the city. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the Amen. presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Jericho stands about four miles west of the Jordan River. Now the children of Israel crossed over the River Jordan in Joshua chapter 3 and uh, in a few moments, they find themselves on the border of Jericho. Now, even if you flunked Sunday school, the one thing that you ought to know about Jericho is that Jericho is a fortified city. Historians and archaeological evidence suggest that the walls of Jericho stand some three or maybe five meters high. Jericho is fortified on every end. And the children of Israel cannot take hold of their promised land until they first conquer Jericho. Jericho walls must come tumbling down before the children of Israel can grab hold of that which God has promised them. They see these massive walls, they see this fortified city standing three to five meters high, and yet 
the children of Israel are not disheartened and discouraged because they remember in Gilgal when the Lord said they must build a monument reminding them of how God brought them through the Jordan. The Lord said to them, whenever you see obstacles in your future, I need you to look back into your yesterday and remember that it's not the first time that I have made a way. So when they see the, the, the walls of Jericho, they, 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 they remember Gilgal. When they see the walls of Jericho, they remember Gilgal. Gilgal reminds them of the River Jordan. The River Jordan reminds them of, of the Red Sea. They begin to play, connect the dots, and they know that God is able. Amen? And God taught them that uh, I, I need you, I need you to, 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 to obey my commandments. Whatever I command, I need you to do. No matter how strange, no matter how painful it can be, uh, if the word is from the Lord, I need you to try it out. So God tells the children of Israel, Palestine, that, that, that look, yes, the city of Jericho is, is, is fortified, but don't worry about that. I've got a plan, and the plan goes like this. I need you to wake up in the morning every day for six days and take a lap around Jericho being quiet. On the seventh day, I need you to get up and take six laps around Jericho in silence. And then on the seventh time, when I say shout, I need you to open your mouth and give me the best shout that you can and sit back and watch the walls come tumbling. I want to make sure that you get that strategy. The Lord says, here's what I want to do. I want you to wake up and, 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 and for six days, I want you to take uh, one lap around Jericho in silence. And, and, and on the seventh day, I want you to get up and, 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 take, and, take, and take six laps around, around Jericho in, in silence. And in the seventh time, I want you to give me glory and open up your mouth and then step back and watch what I will do. Now, the, 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 if there is any believer in the house today, you already know what the sermon is about because you cannot speak about Jericho and not speak about the power of praise. That God is trying to teach the children of, of Israel something. He says, there is something that happens when you give God glory. There is something that happens when you wake up in the morning and make a decision to declare that this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. There is something that happens when you decide to wake up on Sunday morning and, and declare that I will not sit on my chair like a bump on a lawn, but I will walk into his court with praise. I will walk into his presence with thanksgiving in my heart and I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. That something happens when you decide that I will bless the Lord at all times. Amen. 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 That when you open your mouth and you declare his glory, God says change begins to happen in your life. Something happens when you give glory to God. But my friend, to get to Jericho and only preach about the power of praise, it would be to miss the depth of the lesson that God is trying to teach here. Hear me well. I love praise. I mean, I, I love giving God, giving God the praise. In fact, if you all decided to come on Sunday and sit back and do nothing, I'll shout all by myself. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I, I love to praise God. Oh, yeah. I know about the power of praise. But I also know that a Sunday shout without a transformed life on a Monday does not mean anything. Yeah. Yeah. You can't come to church and sit 120 minutes and, and pretend to praise God and think that walls are going to come tumbling down. The lesson the Lord is trying to teach is that yes, friend, praise is critical, but it's not the only component to a complete Christian life. That we cannot measure your Christianity on your shout. Hear my line of thought here, if you will. Seems to me that if God wanted to, 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 to teach them how to shout, he would have said to them, get to Jericho, take one lap, shout after one lap, and uh, if I wanted you to learn about shout, then I would bring victory when you shout. But that's not what God says. God doesn't command them to just shout. No, remember the strategy. I want you to wake up in the morning, I want you to take one lap for six days, keep your mouth shut, 
And when I wake, wake up on, on, on the seventh day, I want you to take uh, six steps uh, uh, around with your mouth shut. And on the seventh one, when I tell you to shout, I want you to open up your mouth and give me glory. Amen? The Lord says, no, 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 no. There is something to learn in walking in silence that is going to bring victory into your life. Why in final does God command in total 12 laps with their mouth closed? Well, I suggest to you because God is trying to, to, to teach them and teach us about some other things that we need to learn in order to bring victory in this new place, in this new building, in this new season that he has brought us into. Can I drop them on you very quickly and go? Yeah. Amen. First of all, the Lord says, in this new season, when I'm taking you into a place of promise, I need you to learn the ministry of showing up. Yeah. I need you to learn how to show up. Bible study students, I've asked God to say, God, why 12 times around the city and nothing happens? Well, some scholars will tell you that maybe the Lord was commanding some kind of uh, military observation to locate uh, the enemy. So the reason they marched around was so that they can survey the walls. Uh, 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 and well, that, that really don't make much sense because, I mean, one or two laps, three around the, the, the city, they, they, they sure would already know everything that is going on there. After two laps, they will know that this is impossible. After two laps, they will know surely that the, 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 the climbing this wall is something that just cannot happen. After two or three laps, they would already recognize that this thing is impenetrable and we cannot do it in our own power. It doesn't take 12 laps for them to figure out that they cannot do this all by themselves. They quickly find out that it is not easy. And maybe that's why God makes them to take so many laps because God, listen, he says, I need you to show up when you know that it doesn't look good for you. I need you to show up when you know that the odds are against you. I need you to show up when it looks like it is unprecedented and impenetrable. I need you to show up when they don't like you and you don't like them. I need you to show up and make your presence known. Amen. Beloved, because one of the signs of power in God is when you have the courage to show up. Maybe when you know the meeting is about you, yeah. but you still show up. Amen. When you know that uh, it, it may get ugly before it gets better, but you still show up. When you know that the verdict may not go in your favor, but you still show up. When you know that the evaluation may, may, may be a little less than what you want, but you still show up. When you know that they are crazy and all that, but, but, but they get on your nerves, but, 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 but you still show up. When, 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 you, you know, when you don't know what the test results are going to bring, but you still show up. God has given you the courage to make your presence known. Tell somebody, you've got to show up. Here's what the Lord says. Listen, listen. He says, if, if you want to bring the walls down, you have got to be at the wall. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Amen. That whatever it is that you want me to do, you've got to show up where you want me to do it. You want me to change your co-worker? Show up at the job. You want me to heal you? Show up at the doctor's office. You want a breakthrough in your house? Show up at the family gathering. Yeah, I know your cousin gets on your nerve, but you've got to make your presence known in the place where you're praying for God to change you. Amen. Amen? God says you've got to show up. You've got to be seen. Stop calling out of work when you're not sick. You've got to show up. Stop taking the long way around because you're avoiding to meet her on the passageway. No, no, no. What you've got to do, you've got to show up in her office, open the door and say, may the good Lord bless you real good. And then go on about your business. Don't be scared. The Lord says show up. Amen. Now, when they march around the city, not only do they see the big walls, but they, they, they also see the, the citizens of Jericho standing on the walls. They see the residents chatting up there on the wall. So while they are marching, not only do they see an obstacle, 
but they see their opposition. No, 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 no. And I say to God, but yeah, I think that is a little bit too much. Eh? I don't think I'll be able to, to handle that. That'll be a little bit discouraging to be, uh, to be walking around uh, every day, seeing people hating on you every day. It would just be too much. The Lord says, listen, no, no, no. The reason why I want them to march around uh, in front of their enemies is not so that they could see uh, their enemies, but it is so that, somebody help me preach here, their enemies could see them. Hallelujah. Their enemies could see that they've got some courage. Their enemies could see that, that they're not scared of anybody. Their enemies could see that they are ready to show up where it's going down. Their enemies need to know that they've got some better in their backbone. Their enemies need to know that they've got some strength in their spirit. Mm, mm, amen. amen. Let me tell you why that is important. Because there are some folk who mistakenly believe that just because we come to church, we ain't got a fight in us. Yeah, amen. amen? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are some folk who think that, that, that that's just because you read the Bible, you're scared of everything. There are some folk who, who think that be, be, because you worship God, they can treat you any old type of way. There are some folk who, who believe that, 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 that because you pray, you haven't got enough gumption in you to go eyeball to eyeball, toe to toe, and let them know that God is able. Well, listen, I came to tell you something today. Don't get my Bible, get it twisted. I can't stand in for a fight. I am afraid of nobody because my God is able. Amen. Amen. I don't run from nobody. I wish I had some, some 27 saints in this place who know that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who can say, I, I fear nothing. The Lord is the strength of my life. Amen. Show up and be seen. Remember, avoidance is not of God. Avoidance is cowardice. Showing up is courageous. Retired. Of weak and wimpy Christians who shout on a Sunday but run from the devil on a Monday. Listen, show up. Amen? You've got to show up. Have some courage in your spirit. Because what God commands the church of God to do is this. Listen, he says, much around. But, 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 but when you look at what he's really saying, it really don't make sense militarily speaking. Right? Because, stay with me. They are down here, and their enemy is standing five meters above. Now, you would know, situation in battle, anybody who is above you has the advantage of higher ground. Amen? So when, when, when God tells them to march, they are actually at a disadvantage because the enemy has the higher ground. And that, there had to be somebody in Israel who said, look, Joshua. I ain't gonna do that. <laughs> They've got an advantage. Mm. Yeah, yeah. They've got higher ground. Th th this is why God says, listen, Joshua, don't, don't only take the people, but also take the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant, which is a reminder of my presence. That wherever they go, the Ark is there to let you know that God is with you. So tell the people to take some courage. That yes, the enemy may have the advantage, but you've got God. Yes, the enemy may have the higher ground, but you have the power. As long as God is in your life, as long as God is holding your hand as long as he walks with you as long as he talks with you I wish I had some folk today that know that when God is for us who can be against us if God is on our side as a matter of fact is there anybody in here today that has ever been in a weakened position, but you had a strong God, that even though things were stacked up against you, you still got a victory, not because of who you are, but because of who God is. Show up. Show up. Show up. You will never get victory until you show up in battle. Listen, listen, I need, I, God says, I, I, need you, I need you to know the ministry of showing up. Number two, secondly, he says, here's what the Lord says. He says, in order to possess the promised land, not only do I need you to show up, 
but, but, but I, I also need you to know the discipline of silence. <laughs> oh, yeah. I need you to know the discipline of silence. Because, you see, see, see the Lord says, much around, but you keep quiet. Take a lap, keep your mouth shut. Go around the city, bite your tongue till it bleeds. Here it is. Because the, the problem is not just the walls on your way. The bigger problem is your mouth. And you've got to learn to tame your tongue. That what's hurting you the most is not what they are saying about you, but it's what you're saying to yourself. Remember, remember God has already dealt with the children of Israel, their forefathers and their foremothers who were always complaining that God and God, good, God's good nerve. Because they just kept on complaining. Everything that came out of their mouth was just negative. Every time they opened their mouth, they were, they were, they were just complaining and God was displeased. So God says, hey, listen, take a lap and I need you to keep quiet. I need you to learn, watch this, that everything that you think, you shouldn't say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the greatest sign of immaturity is the need for you to speak out loud everything that comes to your head. God says, you, 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 you don't have to say everything that crosses your mind. You don't have to tell everybody what's happening at your house. Come on now. Yeah. Have, you, have, you, have you ever asked somebody how, how, how you're doing and then they just give you a whole lot of information that you think, ooh, this is just too much. Listen, just stick to I'm blessed and highly favored and keep it moving. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Do you have to post everything online, millennials? <laughs> really? Do, do you, do you, do you have to? Listen. Don't think that you're good and bad just because you've got a keyboard and a Facebook and you're able to tell everybody off and, 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 and you're, you're, you're able to speak your mind and express yourself and say how you feel. The sign of really growing up in the Lord is when you learn to put it in a journal and not online. Yeah. That when you grow in the Lord, you've got to learn to process in silence. You've got to pray about certain things before you put them online. Amen. Learn to keep your mouth shut. Now, in case you got offended by that point in the sermon, I need you to, to go and visit James when you get home. This, James chapter 3, uh, the third chapter of James. The book of James says that your tongue is an unruly little thing. Your tongue is venomous. It hurts people. It bites people. It cuts people. Now, if you grow in Christ, you've got to learn how to tame your tongue. Now here's an amazing thing, watch this. God says to the children of Israel, you've got to keep your mouth shut. But there's nowhere where it says the citizens of Jericho were quiet. So watch, Israel is marching in silence while Jericho is talking. Now if you know boxing, when they go and they, they get weighed, the term they use, I think the scientific term is they talk trash, right? That's exactly it. <laughs> they talk trash. So Israel is marching, the citizens of Jericho are talking trash, looking down on them saying, what are you going to do down there? You know, many have tried this thing that you're doing. They never succeeded. You're not going to be the first ones to do it. The residents of Jericho are arguing with you that they are taunting and teasing the children of Israel and the children of Israel remain quiet. The reason is, it says, God wants you to know that everybody should not get a response from you. 
that everybody who talks to, should, should not hear you talk back, that you don't have to respond to every criticism, that you don't have to repute every critique, that you don't have to controvert every opinion, that there are some folk that you just have to let them talk and say nothing. Because when you respond to ignorance, you validate it. Amen? Can I give you some free lesson here? Uh, I, I, I'm 42 years old and the Lord has led me through some, 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 some rather mean seasons of life. And I've been through some things. And, and, and one thing that I've learned that I've come to the conclusion of in, in my 42 years of life is that I am not going to waste one minute of my life trying to change people's opinions about me anymore. Amen? Can I tell you how grown I am? Here's how grown I am. You can think whatever you want to think. You can believe whatever you want to believe. You can say whatever you want to say. I don't give a hoot. You know grown folk when, when, when they are not trying to change your opinion. You know grown folk when they are not trying to argue you down and let you think whatever it is that you want to think. Because I've got a PhD in ignoring you. I've got a master's degree in, 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 in leaving you alone. You've got to learn how to let some folk talk and not talk back. Amen? Amen. Folk, you, you, you know the greatest way to, 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 to let somebody very gently in their place and let them know that they have no authority over your life and let them know that their words don't hurt you. Let them know that their opinion uh, doesn't challenge you. It's for you to know what they are saying and for you to ignore it. Amen? Amen. Tell somebody, you gotta keep your mouth shut. Alright, alright, you gotta, you gotta get out of here, you gotta get out of here. The Lord, the Lord says, okay, I, I, I need you, I need, I need you to, uh, to, 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 to lend the, the ministry of presence, I need you to, to lend the discipline of silence. But, but thirdly, the Lord says, I need you to learn the discipline of perseverance. Yeah. I need you to learn how to keep going. I need to try and get the quit out of your spirit. I need you to, to, to have a little bit of stick to itness in your mind. Why? Watch what happens. They, 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 the Lord says they, they, they get out, right? And, and, and he says, I want you uh, to, to, to go around uh, for six days, uh, once a day, take a lap around Jericho. So let's say, imagine it's a Monday. It's the first day they get up, everybody gets dressed, soldiers get their armor on, uh, it's going to take a while to put together the Ark of the Covenant, they put it together, eventually they go for a two to three hour lap around Jericho. They wake up on Tuesday, they, 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 they get themselves ready, the soldiers get their armor on, uh, they, they put the Ark of the Covenant together, they go for a two, three hour lap around Jericho and nothing happens. They get up on a Wednesday, they, they get themselves ready, they, 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 the soldiers get their armor on, they, 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 they put together the Ark of the Covenant, they go for a two and three hour lap uh, around Jericho and nothing happens. Now, if I know folk like I know folk, on Thursday morning when they got up, somebody went, <laughs> yeah. somebody went, dang! Not doing this anymore. What's the point? Yeah. We've been doing this for three days. Not a single brick has fallen out of that wall. <laughs> I'm not going. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Amen? Because there, there are some folk who need God to move quickly. There are some folk who, 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 who want to get their answers immediately there and there after that amen. There are some folk who get frustrated when they worship God and God doesn't move at the moment that they want God to move. There are some folk who still haven't learned that, 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 that when you serve God, you've got to have the discipline of perseverance. You've got to learn how to wait. When you walk with God, now I know that doesn't settle well with you, but when, when you walk with God right, right now, if you, want, if, if, if you want to work with God, if you want to serve God, you must know that you serve a God who doesn't operate on demand. You, 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 he's a God who operates in his own time. And if, and if you would be faithful with God, you will learn 
how to wait. The Bible says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. The Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary. Hallelujah. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. Amen. Would you do me a favor and just nudge somebody one last time and tell them, you've got to wait on the Lord. He may not come right away, but when he comes, you're surely going to want him to come. And when he comes, he will do what God says he will do. Anybody in this place today that has ever waited on the Lord and, and, and found out that God will. Anybody in here that has ever waited on the Lord and found out that yes, he will. That yes, he will. That yes, he will. Would he do it? Would he open doors? Would he change your life? Would he make a way out of nowhere? He will do it. You've got to wait. And while you're waiting, you've got to learn perseverance. You've got to learn to keep doing what God commanded you to do. Watch what happens. The Bible says they get up, they march around, nothing happens. Next day they get up, they march around again, nothing happens. Next day they get up, they march around, and nothing happens again. The next day they get up, they march around, and nothing happens again. The next day they get up, they march around, and nothing happens because they've come to learn that if you're going to walk with God, you've got to be steadfast. You've got to be immovable. You have got to be abounding in the work of the Lord. You can't quit now. You can't throw in the towel now. You've got to be faithful until he shows up. I came by to tell somebody today and give you a little bit of good advice. If I know God like I think I know God, in this new season, I have a sneaky suspicion. I suspect that in this season, you will lift up the prayer and at the end of your amen, you will find that nothing has changed. And just in case this happens to you, that you lift up a prayer in the season and at your amen, nothing has changed. Let me give you some good pastoral advice get on your knees and pray again and if nothing happens get on your knees and pray again and if nothing happens get on your knees and pray again if nothing happens after you say amen Get on your knees and pray again because here's the thing you, you you've got to be steadfast you've got to persevere you gotta go but could it be that the reason why the walls fell down at the first shot on the seventh day is because the children of Israel had persevered from day one to six. Here's the reason why some folk will give a shout on a Sunday and then nothing happens. That is because that is all you do. But if you would persevere with God, if you would worship on a Monday, if you would lift your hands on a Tuesday, if you would bless the Lord on a Wednesday, if you would trust him on a Thursday, if you would open your Bible on a Friday, by the time you get to Sunday, all it's going to take is one shout. All it's going to take is one amen. All it's going to take is one glory. And you see the walls come tumbling down because God will begin to move. Yes, he will. Amen. Yeah! Somebody give him a shout in this place. For God will do it. Come on, stand on your feet. Let's give him the praise in this place. Hallelujah. God will. Your praise and worship will be more effective if you persevere throughout the week. So here it is. God says, I need you to learn to show up and be seen. Don't run from battle. Number two, he says, I need you to learn how to be quiet. Mm -hmm. Biggest damage done to you is by your own mouth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Number three, I need you to learn to keep on persevering. Yeah. Listen, yeah. Yeah. if it doesn't change the first time, mm -hmm. do it again. Yes. Yeah. If you give and don't catch the Lord tomorrow, keep on giving. Mm -hmm. Do it again. 
Because God's way always works. And your seventh day is coming. You just have to persevere. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You can even drop us an email at info at agapefamilychurch.org. Zere will be able uh, to get in touch with you and pray together with you. We know that the Lord is going to do something awesome in your life. If you're in this place, shoot your hand up high. You've never received the Lord as your Savior. We want to lead you to God. Come on, give God a good God bless you. Come on, give God a good God bless you. Because we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't come close. I'm going to pray for you right there where you are. Come on, help, 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 help us say this prayer. Heavenly Father, I come before you. I humble myself. I give myself to your authority. Today, I confess my sins. I confess that you are Lord and that your, your, your son Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood for my sins. And today, I am saved through the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer together with us today, here's what I want you to do. I want you to meet up with the ashes at the end of the, the service today. And uh, the good Lord bless you real good. Shall we take a grace? Amen. Yes. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Father rest and be with each and every one of us until Jesus comes. And the people of God say, Amen. Go with God and God bless you.